Hi guys and welcome to our latest video. My name is Andrea and I'm a 3D artist here in Archie 9 Today I'm here because I wanted to talk to you about how a recent trip to the so-called London cluster led to the development of this image right here. Moreover, I wanted to break down the process for you from the very first draft to the very end. So, without any further ado, let's get into it! started a couple of months ago, it was probably September when we went for a photo recon in the area around London Bridge and around the city cluster. And uh, because of this 2020, it, the atmosphere of suspended reality was tangible and we were feeling like we were in some sort of movie set. There were people around, yes, but not so many and that was uh, in stark contrast with the memory we had of the city of London, so full of people, so alive. And it was feeling a little bit like, you know, in a video game when you've beaten all of the minions and you're reaching the area in which you know that you will have to fight the final boss but there is complete silence, not even birds are singing. And you know that any second soon, the music of the final battle is going to start. Well, more or less, this was the sensation that we were having in the place. And that was contrasting also with the geometries of the city that we used to know. Those skyscrapers that were tracing paths in the sky and they were tracing these super geometric lines and they were mirroring the paths on the ground with the path in the sky. All of these elements together, they kind of fueled discussions between us and once the recon was over and we were heading back to the office, we started discussing about what a possible future of our cities would look like after the pandemic, particularly how the city of London will tackle this and how the city itself would look like in 50, 60 years from now. And once we reached back to the office, we went back to our pens, to our paper and to our PC and we started jotting down some ideas about it. What we are discussing in this video is one of these ideas that came out in that moment. Before we begin, guys, I wanted to remind everybody that if you want, you can download the brushes that we use in these tutorials, you can download the PSDs, you can download a lot of materials from our website and from our Gumroad page, and you can help support the channel that way. And then a couple of good news from the channel, guys. The first one being that we are so happy to announce our new and revamped photo pack website from where you can download wonderfully curated photo packs done directly from the guys here in Archie 9 We use those packs ourselves in our everyday profession, and overall, they will help you all make better images by giving you new references or simply elements that you can composite in your scenes. And the second being that after the success of the portfolio review course we decided to push even harder with the courses and we are so glad to announce that in January we are going to have a matte painting course for everybody interested in that. Check out Arki9 Learn in the next couple of days or weeks to learn more. And last but not least we have now a Discord server that you can join by clicking the link in the description below. So come join the Arcanine community and discuss everything that it is ArcVis or ArcVis related. But now enough with the advertising and I know that you're all here to see how this image is developing, so let's not waste any more time, guys, and let's get to it. All right. So for this first phase, the first thing that I'm gonna do is isolate the building, deleting temporarily the sky so that I can then proceed into painting with a lasso and a brush some very rough shapes that should resemble some skyscrapers. They are loose, their shape is probably gonna change, they are not perfect, perspectively they are not exact, but it doesn't matter because the only thing that matters right now is to be able to prove the concept. From here we then move into the first 3D phase, we use 3ds Max for it and the base book that we are using is just a 3D model freely downloaded from CAD Mapper, which uses open map data so it's freely available and it is super reliable for when it comes about the height of the building, but that's almost it. And for this peculiarly shaped skyscraper, probably some further polishing is needed for a better grade of precision. And I'm not bothered honestly about that because, you know, we are not going to use the 3D buildings of the existing one, but we're going to use the photography so they're not gonna be rendered in the final image. What they're very useful for instead in this phase is for the perspective match and for blocking the light and projecting shadow for a better degree of light matching with the existing photography. Once these two elements are fixed, we then proceed into creating the composition, more or less as it was in the first phase. 
guys, after the first 3D, this is when we actually realized that the idea was taking shape. All of these elements somehow made for an interesting image and they allowed for a nice development of hierarchies. Moreover, this central space, which is almost completely untapped, it allows for a nice story to be developed there. We at this point also felt that all of these bridges though, that are developing around the height of the building, while they were nice when we were orbiting around them in the 3D space, they were actually ruining the composition instead, so we decided to get rid of them and to keep only the bridges that run on the ground floor. Which is almost realistically correct if you think about it, because most likely those kind of pedestrian bridges will be used by, exactly, pedestrians, rather than connecting skyscrapers that will be anyways connected by the ring elements. From now, the remaining 3D phase is all about finessing these themes we, we just talked about after all. We have to make sure that everything is nice and polished, that all of the textures are correctly applied and everything is ready for the final big compositing in Photoshop, which is what actually will define what the image is going to look like. For now, I'm just adding as many details as I can in order to have the strongest possible base to work with afterwards and then creating some sort of uh, foreground interest as well by adding some kind of a landing bay on one of the bridges with some flying cars floating there. And these are models that I've downloaded for free from Sketchfab and you, that you can download as well by following the link in the description. All of the rest of them are props that we had laying around in our library or greebles that have been modeled for previous images or just elements that we downloaded or bought as bash kits. As you can see in this phase the skyscraper position and the bridge position is refined and fixed once and for all, antennas and technological looking parts are added, the facades of the building are movemented for example by adding some landing terraces and the building on the front, trees are added as well on the ground floor for reference uh, even if they will be removed for the render phase and they will add it afterwards in Photoshop, the new ring elements are assembled in place and now they will resemble some actual architecture and and the whole 3D scene is overall starting to take shape in its final form. From here on guys, once the 3D is defined and the render is finalized, it's all about having fun in this big compositing phase in Photoshop where the image will finally come to life and we will breathe life into this image. And the very first thing that we want to do is obviously to mask the new skyscrapers into the photography, color match them with the existing building, and then define a first level of hierarchy by the use of depth. And what we like to use for this purpose is the Z-Depth Render Pass, used as a mask for layers that we'll paint upon, and this really accentuates, in this case, the verticality of the scene. And that's exactly what we want. As you see, the crop is already more dramatic than it used to be in the first draft, as to accentuate the cinematic aspiration of this image. The perspective is extremely accentuated, the crop is most likely a 21 by 9 ish as in the anamorphic format and uh, the focal point of the image which is located at the center of the image for now it is still empty so most likely it will need some sort of protagonist there the color palette that we are going to use is very limited to some uh, sparse element of orange in an otherwise very extremely metallic environment that's mainly blue because while the building might be mainly white and grey, they all reflect quite dramatically the skylight, but that's what we want, right? All of these ultra high-tech environments all around the world are generally dominated by the glass facades and the painted steel, and this painted steel is generally white, and uh, we really want to achieve that feeling for this building to merge with the sky at a certain point. For this purpose, also adding some clouds in an otherwise flat sky also adds in the purpose of accentuating the verticality of the image, of course. And uh, it also allows to shroud the top of our talus skyscrapers in clouds for that very dramatic effect of developing towards infinity. But anyways, guys, regardless of the specific point that I'll go and develop further in this post-production, generally, the big idea is that it's all about making this city of the future coming to life. The idea is that we are in this gritty ground floor of a city that tends to develop only vertically and this feeling to be on the ground floor of the city that has somewhere the 10,000th floor has to feel obvious it's to feel obvious that we are in the city in the area of the city that it is less exclusive and more down to earth 
seriously in every sense intended. Once the image is starting to come together, then it's all a matter of adding details, overlays, greet, and additional elements of reality that all will concur in making the image looking photoreal in the end. Then, of course, we need to add a protagonist in the scene, which in this case I chose to be a group of paragliders. Even then, I will change it in the final version, but it is anyways super useful in this phase to define the main point of interest of the image and to make obvious that it is the center of the composition. <laughs> One nice aspect though that I noticed only now when I was working on the image, it is that uh, this image can work correctly in every possible rotation because of the one-point perspective and the upward-looking camera, which I just think it's a cool element to think about and to notice in the composition. I think that this whole Vertigo scene is somehow influenced by my gaming activity in the past year. It is the result of all of the aesthetic I've been exposed to, whether it is that interesting, very interesting take of a platformer that's Mirror's Edge, or up to a certain extent games like Watch Dogs or even Bioshock or Wolfenstein that kinda made me appreciate the verticality of the elements and the architectures, and I believe this <laughs> kind of reflects in the development of this image. And here you have it! This is the final image that represents our futuristic take on the City of London. This is only one of the many ideas we had that day, so remember to subscribe to the channel for remaining updated on all of our future episodes, smash that like button if you liked this video or if you found it useful, and uh, thank you so very much for watching! And before I forget, this is very, very important, guys. Do it in post. <laughs>